possible. And yeah. I mean, SG made a point right at the beginning of the tournament, they would always ban Sir Bansington. Yeah. And actually, Sync won the coin flip. So they wanted first pick with that. They didn't want Whitbourne and have, like, Grass <laughs> on Congor. They wanted the first pick. And yeah. with that being said, Kronos being banned out right away from Melon, so he knows what they want to go for. But they have more heroes that they want to first pick. Puppet and Puppet Master. Master is one of them. Like Puppet Master, exactly. Now, I, I don't have the exact stats in front of me by any means, but I would be very, very, very surprised to see if Puppet Master's win percentage is arguably the highest in the game out of any hero. I mean, this hero has been a dominating, dominating presence in, the, uh, in this World Final specifically, let alone leading up into the World Finals. It's not a surprise to see that first pick. Uh, Flensmeister here, not only the captain of the team, but of course the carry for the team, more than likely will end up in his hands. So already right off the bat, Stay Green is going to have to deal with that. They first pick a Drunken Master. I mean, definitely a very strong hero for them. Kind of interesting, but at the same time, Untouchable is a very, very powerful ability Absolutely. against Puppet Master. Especially against Puppet Master, as you pointed out. What I would like to bring up is that the Legion side, Sync Esports, actually use already some of their extra time just in the blind bands. Yeah. And you would think that these teams have talked the entirety oh, of the sorry. night and yeah. the morning about this series, oh, yeah. right? They know oh, yeah. what the other team is going to bring up to the table, plus their specific special strategies. Yeah. Still, he uses some of the extra time, maybe as a response to the Kronos blind bend. So I think that Melons was deliberately blind bending the Kronos before the Sir Benzington. Yeah to throw Sync a little bit off, and they thinking, had thought yeah. about that and then bent the Pharaoh as a response. That's a very good point, and you know, I, to vouch for that even further, one, one, one point I want to bring up is that going into this event, uh, well, but more specifically, uh, even on the on the uh, bus right here, Stay Green, pretty much everywhere you see them, if they're together as a team, they are talking about these matches. They are preparing yep. for these matches. They're talking about what heroes are going to be at. And they're talking about what heroes are going to pick. And, you know, a lot of people will, may sit back and say, oh, they're Stay Green. You know, they're just used to winning now, so they just don't even care anymore. They just come no, in and win the event. All. They come prepared, and there's yep. a reason why. They are so dominant right now in the competitive scene. And then on Sync Esports, on the other hand, they made it. They've made it very clear that they've been really preparing specifically for Stay Green. Yep. They didn't do any worrying about the Southeast Asian teams. They did a little bit about BMG, but Stay Green was the team they came in prepared for. So yes. we'll see if it pays off here. Absolutely. And the next picks that they what that we see is Parasite here, which is both a strong here for Sync, but also for Stay Green. So no surprise that they picked it second here and not later in the drafting stage. Yeah. And that actually brings us to Warbeast, followed by Rhapsody as a Game third push. pick. Rhapsody has oftentimes been a very early pick, even up to the first pick, yeah. especially cross-region matches. We saw Rhapsody very early because it doesn't give anything away about your lineup, but here, there are so many heroes that these teams value so highly that we actually see Rhapsody on the <laughs> third pick. At the same time, they're happy to get it there, of course. Uh, support, uh, again, more than likely going to be end up playing that hero. But, yeah, the Rhapsody third pick. Also, that also opens up the possibility, you know, we see that from time to time, the Rhapsody puppet master lane mid, perhaps, depending yep. on the matchups that you're going up against. But how about that finish there for Stay Green? You talked about the War Beast, but also Tempest on top of that. So they got that team fight. The push presence definitely coming out. A lot of physical damage also mixed in there, of course, especially with the War Beast and Drunken Master. Uh, what do you think of that so far? Well, I talked to I talked to many players and even management staff, and both most of the players, including Sync players, said that the highest chance for SG to win this series is yeah. with pushing strategies. And guess what? They have a Warbeast and Tempest at their disposal already. So, I also asked them, "Are you prepared for those pushing strategies?" And they said, "Yeah, we definitely have ideas how to get around it, how to defend it, yeah. and probably carry it to the late game stage and beat SG there." Because the majority of the opinions is that. Stay Green is very strong across the game, but if you would compare the stages of the game, they are the weakest in the late game compared to the other high-tiered international teams. Yeah. So, with a Puppet Master being first picked as a late game carry, that's a statement already. So, we have the pushing side here for SG, and now we need to see if Sync can actually go up against it and will survive until that stage. Yeah, of course, counter push, obviously a big part of that. Now, Rhapsody, definitely very good and very effective with that. The Whiplash can also be powerful with it, but something tells me they're going to maybe lean towards maybe another hero uh, to, to go on top of that even further. So we'll see what that ultimately comes down to. But as far as these bands kind of picking up here, Empath, the first band by uh, Flensmeister over there. You got Pestilence follow-up. You look at that Balfagor band, and, you know, we have seen that before, and again, especially if there's a push lineup coming, we do see Balfagor a lot of the times band in that second yep. tier band. You just do not not want to let them get a hero like that. He's kind of that ultimate pusher in the end. And then the Gauntlet, uh, the la or the second band coming out from Swinomels. There's a Torturer final band over here on the Legion side, so taking away a support option. And now it's the final band going to be coming out for Stay Green here. 
Yeah, strong melee initiators have been banned by SG so yeah. far, Pestilence and Gauntlet. I wouldn't even be surprised to see a third one, but maybe they have a specific hero that they need to use their third ban for. But if they don't really have an idea what to ban, or if there are too many heroes equally, then they're probably going to go for another you, melee You know what I'm really eyeing here? Is that Tundra? And I really wonder if Stay Green yes. is thinking about the Tundra, because, uh, again, x and Mouse and Werno and Sink Eastward specifically, they love that Tundra-Parasite combination. But, but it's a Bubbles yeah. instead. The interesting part is that Bubbles is equally good counter-pushing as a Tundra. A Tundra True. is really good with his piercing shots for counter-pushing as well. Obviously, his mana pool is slightly less or slightly smaller than the one of the Bubbles, of course, but he will have a bottle. So we might actually see a Tundra. You know, I was talking to a BMG player, KGE, yep. and he said from the from the heroes that we might see from th uh, from Sync, it could definitely be a Tundra. Yeah. He's very high up there. And I asked him, could we see a Warbeast from them again as they played against you in the series yesterday? And he said, no, 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 no <laughs> Warbeast. So... Uh. Some confidence there if they should meet Sync in the Grand Finals. But yeah, very interesting that they ban out the bubbles here. So, I mean, huh. right now we don't have too much deep push here coming from the Legion side. There is pretty much only the Dance Floor, which is not the biggest of tools anymore after yeah. it got nerfed oh with yeah. the damage against Creep. So they definitely need some counter push here or they need push themselves. So when Hellborn side would group up and go for towers, they can just counter push other lanes. Okay, they're gonna go the madman there, so <laughs> you look at that snap response yep. from Swim Hells. He's he knew it all along what he's going with. Slender the snap response. So and I like that too because they've already used all their extra time basically. So yep. he's really putting it on yep. them. He's not gonna give them time to think about it. He's like, you know what, you gotta make the decision. So obviously that's a very, very smart decision there by Swindle Mounds. The madman coming out. Now what is that final pick? The right click in the Magmus here. Uh, they already got so I mean yeah they, they still need that initiator was what it looks like in the end for that middle presence so maybe Magnus is going to be it. There you go. That was Magnus. a really good point out from you that Kyle instantly picked yeah. the Slither and not let them have any time. He still has 72 seconds yeah. extra time. He can use all the time in the world now to discuss this. They are calling for a remake well, AP here. Uh, oh. Maybe because of the tie casters. Exactly. Okay, so oh, the tie casters still. Okay. Because I just saw Wincy coming in here, so <laughs> might have always slept a little bit. But like, it's no problem. Hey. I mean, Kai wanted to have a toilet break anyway, so yes. might as well yeah, go for that. Anyways, so yeah. he can use all the time in the world now. So what would you like to see round up the lineup here of the Hell said You have so much push already. Well, they need a support. Uh, I mean, unless they're in a slither support, which they have done before. That w I guess that wouldn't be out of the question, but... Uh, you know, I, okay, Empath, I was going to say Empath, actually, but Empath is banned, so for that Dragon Master combination, and maybe something like a, uh, maybe something like an Aluna here, just more of your go, maybe even a Pyromancer, I know Z-Freak especially loves that Pyromancer, uh, something to pair up with the Drunken Master is what it seems like. It's, it's going to come yep. down to in the end. So. I think Pyromancer would be really difficult if you go 2v2 lane middle against the, both Rhapsody and Magnus with the Drunk Master because yeah. obviously you know where the Drunk Master is going to push the target, but it's really hard to hit the stun with the Pyro afterwards anyways. True. Magnus can stun away. There's the Rhapsody Staccato that can interrupt Pyro's uh, cast animations very easily. So um, I think with Torture being Ben and Empath, there is... <laughs> He will have to use the entirety of the extra time yeah. here because he really wants to find it's the perfect easy, hero. Yeah. So Aluna is a good shot, definitely. Okay. Could be Aluna. If they want to dodge the dual lane middle and send something else there, like the War Beast maybe, they could actually have a high, um, high caliber sh support for the short lane yeah. that just needs levels to scale into the mid game or the late game. And blitz. it's going to be a blitz. They like blitz. They, 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 again, it's been a while since we've seen them yep. do blitz, I feel like. But they, they have gone through that history. My nuts actually has played a great blitz. They, they usually they like to run it more of the secondary support yep. a lot of the time. But they are going to be running as the main support here uh, in the hands of Z-Freak. So they go the blitz support. And that tends to lean towards more of that babysit as you're kind of getting at, I think, uh, in the end. So maybe we actually, are going to see. It could actually still be a dual lane middle. Blitz is not as good in the middle dual lane, but well, he still holds his ground at least. You know what I'm finding really interesting here is unless they're going to swap it up after this remake, Limp is actually playing the War Beast right now. And with Stay Green, like usually that wouldn't be out of the question, but out of all the out of all these suicide heroes that may be picked up uh, for them, War Beast usually is played by Chessy. That, that's a very, very comfort hero for him. So, again, I don't know if they're going to change it up after the remake and they just simply ready it up to the go. The thing but. is, Kyle is probably the most determined player to win this event. Yeah. If there is anything he can use to make the game easier for his team, he will use it. So you, yeah. there is no chance for us to guess right now, is that actually Limp's hero? Yeah. Or are they going to switch it, as you said, after the remake AP? So... Let's just wait and see how that goes out. But um, I was talking to Sam Milkfad before the before this match started, and I asked him, "What is your opinion? Who's going to win?" <laughs> and he said, "It's going to be probably two-one for SG. I think 
whereas two games are going to be 15 minute storms in either direction. And the third game is going to be really long, drawn out. Sure. And I asked him, okay, why do you think is SG going to win? Just because of LAN experience or something would be the easiest answer. And he said, no, I think that Kyle is just the most determined player to win <laughs> tournaments. And he brings that, it's more than just passion, and yeah. he brings that into his team and forces his team to be on one page with him. Yeah, you no, know, it's we we we've t definitely have talked about this before. I mean, it, when it comes to a player like Swindle Mounts, not only he has he has one of the longest histories in competitive heroes and new earth out of yep. any player, especially ones that are still around. I mean, he's been in the Han scene basically since the beginning. Uh, those in houses way back in the day, the high TMM scene, and eventually, you know, found his niche. He w he was always known as a very you know he was a trash talking player. He liked to talk shit basically, uh, and you know he he. He got a lot of haters because of that. To be fair, I mean, he got yep. a lot of haters. He knows this. Uh, it's no, that's no secret, right there. As when he finally found a team in Stay Green, though, and then they finally started winning events. And he, in a sense, he he did kind of become a little more humble. But at the same time, I mean, he still has that attitude of being very cocky and very, yep. you know, a guy that's you know bring 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 it. But at the same time, I was just kind of making the point earlier. Stay Green as a team. They are. They prepare. I mean, they. That's almost like a, a, a game for Swindlemount specifically. He likes to get in his opponent's heads. I mean, it's part of the game. Yep. As you see, it's just as much as a mental game as it is as actually playing the game itself. So you definitely got to respect that on a certain level. Whether or not you respect, you know, his attitude or whatever, you got to respect that. I think it's, it's nope. safe to say. So. I definitely agree with you. Whether you respect his personality or not, that's your choice. And I mean, if you have a lot of haters, you're doing something right, I guess. But yeah. you have to respect him for his skill and mindset in the game. Yeah. There's a reason why he won so many tournaments with different <laughs> teams. Of course, he is not the player in the squad. It's not like no. Kyle is the one who does everything or something, but he is leader for a reason. No, so, in fact, throughout yeah. this event, I think it's – you could even say it, he would probably admit it. He's probably been the least – best performing player on his team, or the least performing player on his team, in the sense that, you know, he hasn't really been doing that well, honestly, yeah, as far be. as his last hitting, as far as his just play in general. Uh, but in the end, you know, he is that captain, and he's the one that leads that team, of course, and there's a reason why he's, he's had that much success uh, with, with, with the team that he's been a part. So, And if you go over to Sync Esports, you have a very different approach to the game. You have yeah. a very crafty team, like several of their players are very crafty. They're looking for how to exploit certain things. We yeah. are obviously not talking about bugs, but we are talking about hero mechanics, how they can use them to their advantage in a way that has never been seen before. Yeah. So we're not going to see it with this lineup, obviously. It's a very standard lineup. You have a Magnus Rhapsody, probably had a meal, a Puppet Master Shard, you have a Parasite in your own jungle, and then what was the offline again? Ah, <laughs> uh, shoot. Uh, it was it not was a Bubbles because it was no, bad. Mad Man. Mad it was Man. a madman yeah. for the offline, okay, yeah. yeah. So we're going to see a very standard lineup here, but that's okay because they're kind of testing the waters. They have played against SG in scrims before, and they actually beat SG, but there were several teams that beat SG in yeah. scrims before. BMG did, S2Y did as well. Yeah. Then they lost one game to MR, but then again, Sync lost one game to, I believe, Turtle Master as well. So they did, yeah. None of these teams are untouchable, and even BMG was behind against S Sync. And the beautif the beauty of this tournament right now is that teams can take so many games off of each other. Yeah. And that is really exciting. And, I mean, that's why we're saying this could be the finals, well, actually. You know, again, it's uh, looking back at the group stages, I think this was one of, if not the best group stage we've ever had in terms of the evenness. Yeah. And, you know, we only had one undefeated team. That was BMG, of course, uh, in the end at a Group B. But... Every team at least won one game. There was no very disappointing, you know, one uh, yep. no-win team. Cats game, and they, they did finish with that one win, but still they got that win in the end. And it happened to be their first the first win of the, <laughs> the uh, group status for them, or the first game, and then they went on losses, unfortunately, after that. But they actually beat MRR. Yeah, I mean, beat and MRR, MRR is here in the semifinals. Which went to be stay one green one in against Stay Green, exactly. and it's now in the semifinals. So, so yeah. yeah. Definitely, so the, the I agree with you. The teams has been uh, very, very uh, even in that sense. It really has been. So, But again, here we are on the okay. bracket stage. And okay, I think we're good to go now. For game number one, they're going back in. It is all pick here. And let's go. Let's go. Finally, let's go. game number one. I'm so excited, man. And, again, I know we don't have the crowd behind us just yet. I know, you know, people having fun with that, whatever. Uh, the venue is not open just yet. It will be open here oh, very, you're going to see it later. Like, later it will pack up. It will be me. so full. <laughs> you will have so many people back. staring at you. But yeah. for now, let's enjoy the game. Let's enjoy the game. Let's jump in here. And, you know, what? I can hear in the background right now. I'm pretty yep. sure that's is going, yep. let's go, let's go. Like, And what they probably did, the chat, they did their stay green chant where it's like, stay green what, stay green what? Okay, they there did you switch go. it up. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Limp is playing the Drunk Master now. So, yeah, I'm honestly not surprised. I don't even think that it was a, a case of, okay, we're going to remake anyways, just ready up on the hero. I think that they actually had this to throw the Legion side a little bit off. 
Maybe. With Kyle, you never yep. know. So, we already went over the heroes here for the Legion side. We're obviously going to introduce them later. But talking about the Hellborn side, the interesting part is with that with this Blitz, you can actually go long lane. It's a very good long lane support. So, yep. we could see a dual lane long lane. I don't think so because the Rhapsody Puppet Master on short lane together with the Parasite is extremely strong. Yeah. But there's at least a possibility for that. What we expect, however, is a Slither Solo Shard, a Drunk Master Blitz in the mid lane, a War Beast on the long lane, and a Tempest in their own jungle. Yeah. All right. So off the bat, you do see actually the Legion team. We got uh, Sync Esports here. They're going to start sending their five heroes <coughs> uh, all the way to the top lane. So obviously they're going to look to lock down my nuts here and and, you know, again, you talk about Sync Esports, yesterday against BMG, they did a strategy where they completely countered Hanskin right off the yep. bat on Ophelia. He was level 3 at 12 minutes into the game because they put value on completely blocking all of his camps with the Hellhounds, with the wards, with everything possible, and that they accomplished. So uh, you kind of wonder if they're going to almost look to do that same strategy here against uh, against Tempest. Now, they don't have a War Beast to assist with that, so you might not be – Probably not in the end, to be honest, but at least still, they're going to get some wards down here and kind of block out at least a couple of camps. I wonder if Kyle said Chessy scout with the wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but at least they did so, and thus they spotted the train coming into their own jungle. Tempest kind of hanging in the vicinity. He wants to just see where exactly they're going to head because maybe he gets an idea which camps are going to get blocked here with wards. As you pointed out already, there's a ward of revelation for the left hard camp here. It's going to be pretty good because yep. it's actually very hidden as well. The interesting part is about that camp. You can block so deep into the river that it doesn't even make sense that uh, that th should block. I know, block, it's like, that actually blocks it. Yeah, really? exactly. Yeah, so, does. in the end, they're going to block three camps, it looks like. And um, I like the ward placement here a lot because usually you have the wards slightly differently placed so they give more vision, especially the wards of... Uh, the words of sight, yeah. but this time around on the completely opposite side. So that could be very difficult for Tempest to counter. Let's see where it puts yeah. the first word of ref here. And he's already heading into the wrong direction. Okay. Kind of. Well, he's going to go over here to this one. He's going to see what he can make happen on the left camp, maybe, or maybe even the pole camp. So well, he's not placing it just yet. No, he's he's going to wait for the 30 exactly second. what okay. is blocked. Exactly. Now he's going and now we'll see where he's going to place the D word. Well, he might just start farming right away. Which okay. Is, yep. Seems like that's what he's going to do. Just says screw it. So Probably will eventually come out here. Want to uh, quickly go over the player names? Even though Let's do it. Let's everyone do it. knows <laughs> Everyone anyways. probably knows by now, but hey, just for the hell of it, just to make it official here. Flens Maestro, a.k.a. Flens yes! Maestro, playing the Puppet Master. Of course, we got Madman being played by Keizu here. Slapped, going to be on Parasite, a very iconic hero of his, arguably his best hero. Support on Rhapsody, and then, of course, Mickey playing the Magnus here in that middle lane action. Speaking of the middle lane, we got Magnus Rhapsody versus that Drunken Master Blitz. So they do actually descend the Blitz mid here to go with Drunken Master rather than running it more as a babysit here. And yeah, do you think that makes sense? I think it does make sense. I mean, it will definitely help the Drunken Master to get some extra quick hits here, and that's what he needs as well. Um, uh, Blitz on the... He, he's not that good against the Madman. Yeah. Madman will get more than he would get with the Blitz in his lane, obviously, but Slither is extremely good as, against Melee, as we talked about yesterday. So Slither will completely hold his ground, no no worry there. So it's fine that Blitz is here. Um, I would actually, it wouldn't be that bad if Blitz was at least looking to, to show a little bit of presence on the bottom lane, just for a couple, just like two minutes or something, but yeah. it's extremely dangerous with a Parasite as well. Yeah, so he's going to go for the top rune, actually. It happens to be a regen rune, not the biggest rune in the world for two minutes especially. In fact, yeah. arguably the worst rune at two minutes. <laughs> you definitely yeah, want to Tempest to have that rune. He's going to go for it later, I suppose, unless they're waiting for the bottle and then picking it up themselves. Yeah. Speaking of Tempest, he hasn't been able to block either of the medium camps. He did, however, find the Rod of Revelation here with the hard camp, so that's pretty good for him. He's going to find the small camp now and probably go to the hard camp on the right after that. So he's going to be doing fine in terms of farm. Yeah. Parasite is still level one. Yeah, his start obviously not nearly as effective here. And one, part of the reason is that he tried to counter ward the big camp in the middle of his jungle and he didn't find it because Z Freak also placed the ward on, on the best possible spot. Not yeah. the usual one, but a completely different one and thus he didn't find it. Yeah, able to able to kind of play the mind games trick and eventually it works out right there. So it is a level two and you actually see they're gonna go for the yellow camp right here as a team very early. Yeah. Rhapsody, Magnus and Parasite leeching a transfer one. It's a very interesting tactic, actually. Yeah, it's very good, though. I like to see that. If you remember, MRR yesterday was very good at doing those things as well. Yep. They play dual support opposed to a jungler, but, I mean, you can do it with a jungler, obviously, as well. 
Thing is, however, Parasite is still level 2 right now. That's definitely going to be an issue sooner or later. Uh, Hellhounds blocking the other hard camp. Obviously, that is something okay. we should have kept in mind. So yeah. that's one of the reasons why he is such a low level. It's not his own fault. Of course, he does have a Wild Hunter now, though. And he probably wants to do something with that. Yeah. So again, Chessy, a fantastic Warbeast player, has tons of history on it, and uh, doing a great job of it once again right there. And you know, speaking of Warbeast, obviously those red, glowing red hands, as I call them, aka the battle cry that he's applying to his team, that's maybe even another reason as to why Tempest is even having that, that better time than the Parasite. I mean, just those things enhancing, obviously, all around in favor of Stake Green. So this middle matchup, let's take a closer look here. How is this breaking down? Magma so far, I mean, the stacked yellow cam, I'm pretty sure he got a majority of that farm. If not all of it, he's nearly 300 gold per minute. Drunken Master slightly behind him at about, at about 276 gold per minute. So the creep score again a little bit skewed because of that yellow camp stack that they did. But uh, the GPM kind of tells the story right there. That Magmus is having the slightly better time in the end. But speaking of Parasite's struggles, uh, he is actually going to head to the top lane here, by the way. I was going to say, should he be, look to be aggressive? And it looks like the answer is yes here. Yes, um, they're going to look for the Tempest here, which is the smart choice. But they might run into Creep Wave. It's very close here. Um, the thing is, of course, oh, Tempest might actually find himself in a bad spot here. This could get interesting. Yeah, you see Madman coming in. He has an Infant's Rune, actually. There's the Minotaur. That they see him. The Ward of Sight will spot him right here. Minus is going to scout things out with the minions. He knows Madman's missing currently. And, you know, for all they know, Parasite's arguably missing. So there we go. Parasite's going to spot the Minotaur. Gets killed. But out comes Madman, but no follow-up. Tempest just a little bit too far. Without the stun from the Minotaur, they don't want to go. So he needed to wait a little bit further or a, bit a, bit a little bit longer with the Minotaur around the corner. Yeah. Let the Madman do the initiation with the slow. But the minions of Tempest were still up, luckily for him. So he was able to kill, almost kill the Minotaur. Or at least Parasite got the experience for that. That would have yeah. been horrible if he <laughs> also gave that to Tempest. But I mean, Slither is level 6 now, and he's obviously sitting at a very good farm. He's 29 and 20, actually 30 and 20 right now. He's so many denies to his name, opposed to the 11 and 0 for Madman. So Kezu, as expected, struggling with a melee hero against the Slither. On the other side, you have a Warbeast who's sitting at 11 0 himself yeah. against the Puppet Master with 34 and 20. So both solo short heroes are really punishing their offline counterparts. Yeah, yeah, Slither, you know, arguably one of the best laners in the game, especially of heroes that we see on the competitive scene, picked up and obviously having a great time. So Mel to cover hero fizz, no doubt too. Meanwhile, the middle lane, Dragon Master gonna be jumped on right here. Is this chance for a Bloodlust kill? No, it's not. He staggers away and he will be fine. So how about this, by the way, nearly six minutes into the game, no Bloodlust kill just yet. You know, th this is that case though. They're on the main stage now. They're in these crunch time matches, very serious matches during the semifinals. You got to wonder if those, you know, that that little bit passable oh, plays kind of kicking in. But yeah, oh, Rhapsody. Rhapsody. Oh, he's going to be jumped right there. There's a pushback. Rhapsody is going to fall on so much for no Bloodlust. Cast the curse. There we go. Yeah, yes. I guess so. No, but that was very good. Um, that's one of the things that Stay Green is really good at, the, the timings that they hit. Yeah. There is a six-minute rune top. Let's go there with four heroes, because why not? Even Slither with Awesome Farm leaving his lane in order to assist for a possible kill. And it was the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that they farmed the small camp, and Nightmares actually went for a 3-0-2 build. So he doesn't have Steam buff. He would not be able to assist the Rhapsody and can't get caught out himself, which might happen in mid lane. Yeah, he's going to be pushed back in. You see right there, Junker Master did a good job of positioning himself out of the line stun as he knew he was going to do. So in the end, he cuts away, he gets away, but he does prevent damage on himself and it continues back to farming. So they're keeping up the pressure. And this middle lane, they're starting to gain pretty good control here, maybe as a result of that. I mean, still with that said, Magnus is having this slightly better time. Then, uh, then the Drunken Master killed him. By the way, Puppet Master actually used his ultimate at the bottom lane. It didn't look like it did it did the most damage on a Warby, so maybe just uh, miscalculated exactly where he was or whatever. But in the end, he is having still a good time of farm. 350 Absolutely. gold per minute. I think that you will see kind of some several misplays in this game so far. I would even count, uh, count the Rhapsody's movement towards the top room as a misplay because even without the Slither, there's still a Tempest, a Blitz with a Speed Burst, and the Drunken Master. There are very few routes that you can actually escape from the top rune, so it's kind of a mystery, but that's perfectly fine. We're into the first game of the day in the yeah. first semifinals, and several of the players are really tired. I mean, you have to, <laughs> as as a viewer at home, you have to see with the event always being packed, with so much going on, with so many games behind them already. Obviously, you're not gonna get too much sleep. There are matches that you want to discuss before the tournament as well. So, yep, not too much sleep. You're gonna be tired, but. Stamina plays a big role in those matches. Well, you know, that's actually a good point to bring up, too, it's concerning Sync Esports. They were actually here later last night playing against ADN, of course, to qualify for the semifinals. Uh, their quarterfinal match, you know, had to go late, late, later on into the night than expected. So 
they didn't get as much rest even as State Green, arguably, as a result of that, you know, so you can keep that in mind as, as, as a thing that may be affecting them. But in the end, you know, they're not here to make excuses at the same time. No, no, no. it's not about excuses. No, but it, it is explanations it's, it's worth bringing up. Absolutely, I agree. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, in the end, they're here, and obviously, you know, Got to get done what has to be done. So, so far, though, it is, for the most part, a slower-paced game. Obviously, we do have the Bloodless kill out of the way. Yep. But since then, uh, not a whole lot of action still. No, both teams don't want to do uh, big mistakes right now. They're kind of testing each other's water. And, um, I mean, Tempest is, again, in danger. There's Invisible Magnus and the Wild Hunter. But he's, oh, he's actually going back into the jungle. Yes. Oh, this is going to be a kill, possibly. Tim is going to be jumping right there. Eruption channel. That should be absolutely a kill. Mine, that's what we picked off. That is going to pour it out. Very that's nice. a guaranteed kill. Yeah, because you see they're coming over from the middle lane. They knew exactly that was going to be happening. One of the biggest strengths of Blitz is that he can help his allies to be anywhere very, very quickly, especially in their own jungle, of course. Yeah. And with the skill that, that he went for, he will always have a quick and available for the Drunk Master. Drunk Master already extremely mobile hero himself. Together with the quick end, definitely a good combo here. And as you pointed out, Magnus having a better time middle, but at the same time, if you look at the bigger picture, there's a reason why Blitz is very good with Drunk Master as well. Yeah. Top lane, Slither's gonna push to the tower a little bit right here. He's got those wards down, so uh, applying some good pressure. But again, him and Puppet Master and Slither are kind of fighting back and forth. Slither continues to be slightly more ahead, though, of Puppet Master when it comes to the farm. Slither does have the Energizer earlier on. Puppet Master, on the other hand, he's got Steam Boots, and he's just about finished to visit, finish with the Whispering Helm, even. So, again, the items are starting to add up here for the early game, but especially State Green, they're more that team. They get those early team fight items, the Energizer, the Soul's Bulwark, and they'll start pushing as a team. The Ring of Sorcery and the Astrolabe, obviously, another yep. big one. In fact, does Tempest have that, or no? He has a Ring of Sorcery and Bottle. Okay. So he doesn't have anything further. No boots even just yet for my nuts here. Yeah, but he will probably go for the top tower as he is right now. Think he him. Oh, he has a black hole, though. Yeah, is it going to catch him? Will he go for it? That would have been a yeah, ballsy attempt. Very close, but Blitz is still there. There we go. Blitzkrieg comes down. He gets the, he gets the stock off, though. This could disorient them. No, they are going to see him. In comes the Tempest down. There's the Tempest ultimate of Poland Madman to guarantee the kill. On Acacia, so you know, it's one of those situations where it's like he used the Tempest Ultimate to get one kill for single player, but hey, it's there to be used and they got the kill. Yep. Actually, sometimes you confuse, or I do at least, you confuse the Hunt names with Dota names, but Elemental <laughs> Void is actually a really good name. I should yeah. use that instead of like, oh, <laughs> it is. dropping the Elemental Void. I just say Tempest Ultimate, honestly. <laughs> it's just easier that way. Okay, that works too, I guess. So Warby yeah. is part of the entrance here. The thing is, they do get the tower here, and they got a kill on Madman. If they would have not got the kill on Madman, oh, middle. Oh, what is going on here? They're diving big time. Drunken match, they're gonna barely survive. There is that top tower kill in the process. So yeah, Parasite's face like a leech, not enough for the kill. Even with Magmus going in there for the existence. So Drunken match will live, but that's a big deal because not only did he live, but this has been a good distraction here and allowing them to even further push the top lane. Yep. There's obviously some counter push with Madman, but there's still health potion Slither. They might fall back now, though, without the Elemental Void, <laughs> which is what they're going to do. The thing is, um, despite the death, Madman is actually sitting on the same GPM as the War Beast, slightly yeah. higher. And that's part partly because of the pushing and also because of the Slither Wars, because he was able to get a lot of those. Um, it's not too much gold, but it adds up. Yeah. If you get like 10 Slither Wars, in the end it does add up. So even here, Tempest Minions, Tempest Minions actually give an insane amount of gold. Oh yeah, yeah, if you add that in the Hellhound, so yeah, good amount of gold definitely coming out of those things, so. Yeah, at the same time, you don't want to be feeding them, obviously, to the other team. So, uh, bottom tower pushed in by Flensmeister. So again, him and Slither really competing back and forth for that top farm of the game. And overall, I mean, you look at the goal lead, plus 127 goal lead yep. for State Green. I mean, that's Completely nothing, obviously. Even. Experience is basically the same story. So, this is this is proven to be a very even game. It, it kind of has to be expected, really. Yeah, it does. But I would say Sink is slightly in the fa um, ahead right now because um, they are one death behind, but they are farming better. This is why the gold lead is so even. Right now, however, suddenly we have uh, 500 gold lead coming out for the Hellbound side, so they picked up on the farming again, especially with the Tempest here, of course. And Warby's getting Kree Wave here as well, and Puppet Master has to find some camps in the jungle. He does get a DD, that's gonna help him, for sure. But there won't be many stacks in this game. You obviously still have a Parasite, who, by the way, takes the second Wild Hunter here from his side of the map, and is going to look to get a kill middle with that. Yeah, you know, Slither just put it back to base. He got some reach and he finished the sacrificial stone. I think this is going to be a time for Stay Green to actually do that whole group. And in fact, here we go in the middle lane. There's a blitz screen. Now it's going to be disjointed actually from the lava surge. 
from Magmus, but he didn't get over the ledge. That's going to cause some issues. Parasite's there with the Wild Hunter, but down goes Magmus. And the Wild Hunter just has to run around. He's looking for the opening. He has team support. Puppet Master and Mammoth are here, but the numbers still in favor of Stay Green. Sinking Sports falling back. There goes the Booty Puppet out. Poison Burst is up, though. Is it going to be enough burst damage on the board? Drunken Master? No, it's not. Magmus does in. The eruption not going to be channeled just yet. They will finish off Tempest, though. No Elemental Void was available that whole fight. So the chase on a Drunken Master is successful. Beautiful parallel to finish him off. Obviously, a big buyback from Magmus right there. Yeah, that would have been actually good for Stay Green because they forced the buyback on the Magmus, and you want a portal key on the Magmus, so an early buyback really makes him suffer. But since Drunk Master died as well with beautiful reaction time here on the Puppet Master, he was able to get his combo on the Drunk Master before Drunk Master could put him into the fray, and he would have possibly died himself. So yeah. that was really well played by uh, Fletzmeister here, so kudos to him. Middle Tower gonna fall right there. And you know, speaking of early buybacks, Stay Green is a no one for that big time, especially Swinabellas. He loves, loves, loves to do those early buybacks. So Mickey's like, you know, we got early buyback strats of our own, and obviously makes some big plays right there. And I think, is that gonna be his portal? You know, he bought backs actually. Oh, there is a portal no, key. That, no, that, that is. is okay. That is his portal key now because he's sitting on 92 creep kills. So yeah. despite his stun kind of missing because he was uh, hitting below yeah. the cliff there. Yeah. The place that he made afterwards and the place that he made before enabled him to get a really fast portal key. Now he still has his ultimate. So oh, that's yeah. really good for for the Legion side here. They can defend this. They also have the Tempest ultimate now though. So this is the battle of the ultimates. Here we go. The rushing Mitchell. Big stun in from Mickey right there. Is the follow up enough? Does a question. Tempest going to be locked down. No elemental void. Magnus on the counter. But the Whoa. Protect protected melody. Going to be coming out from support right there. Saves the day. Blitz is going to be chased down. Now, even more than likely will die Willie. Quick, it's going to be activated. Can he actually get away from this? Stock is up from Mammoth. Chase him now. Barrel is going to be up. There we go. Wow. Protect a melody of the century right there. Nova. Whoa. That was insane. That was so well played by the Rhapsody. And it takes more than just pressing R. You have to position yourself so yeah. carefully with all those spells to get it out in time. And that was perfect timing as well. So really, really well played by support here. <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah, you said it. It's, and again, I've always, I've always stressed about that ability. It's such great ability in the sense you don't need to fully channel it. You can just use yeah. it just enough to stop the initial first damage, and it's done its job. Yeah. That was well, a full off, channel, yeah. basically. Yeah, that was a full channel yeah. that stopped all that damage. Mickey for sure was dead if it wasn't for that full channel. So hell of a save, hell of a turnaround. And uh, well, I say turnaround lightly because again, that was Mickey actually jumping in with a big ultimate uh, in the first place. And yeah, you stressed that going in. That was a huge hold for Sync Esports. And on top of that now, Puppet Master, he's, he's got a pretty decent lead now in the GPM department. And Stay Green must be so confused. They kill the Magnus middle, he buys back. Yeah. He gets like one kill and one assist, <laughs> and, and suddenly he has a portal key yeah. out of nowhere. And part of that goes back to the stacked small camp that they had earlier and his skill builds. He didn't go for Steam Bath initially. He has one point in it now, but he also has four points in the Volcanic Tower. Yeah. So with that small camp that he farmed and the others only leech experience, he was able to get significantly ahead of the Drunk Master, has a fast portal key, Stay Green goes for their usual timing push on the middle tower, doesn't, don't get it, and die in the process. So yeah. really well played by Sync overall as a team here. Good looking into the future and yeah. predicting what SG is going to play as a style with their pushing. Yeah, players. and I think, yeah, you know, still earlier on, 16 and a half minutes, but this is probably the biggest lead we've seen so far. 3,400 goal lead, 4,500 experience lead uh, in favor of Sync Esports right now. That's a big item pickup. Assassin Trout just finished on Puppet Master, already with the Whispering Helm. Again, this hero in general has just been go-to so powerful as far as a carry-picked hero. So now when it comes to Stay Green's lineup, though, again, they're all about the team fight, especially that group up and push, especially with the Elemental Void presence. They got the Poison Burst. It is a level 2 Poison Burst now, so they're going to continue to farm up a little bit more. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe the Astral Lane is going to be a big item yep. that they're waiting for yeah, here probably, probably, and they go from there. Maybe even a Soul's Bulwark uh, perhaps to even follow things up. But... Uh, we'll see. Abyssal Skull still not even finished on chest, though. He's actually really struggling. Now that I'm looking at his farm, 215 gold per minute. That's Is, is, that, is that surprising to you? Well, there's also a lot of revelation blocking the engines right now, and before he was under a lot of pressure. Oh, oh my god, on. that damage! <laughs> the Shroud was finished on Puppet Master, and with that, the World Beast is gone. That Jeez. is, yeah, as you just talked about Chessy struggling, he is under pressure. You mentioned that uh, Papa Nossa Alti was used early in the lane as well. Yeah. So it's definitely like, even he just alone, as much as Slither puts pressure on the Batman, he's able to put pressure on the Warbeast. Yeah. Magnus in the meantime, he has to, oh, the Elemental Void's gonna lock him down. Will he get to support in time? Do they even have enough damage? Yes, they do. So 
Elemental Void is down, but at the same time, it does result Double in the big kill. But will this be more? There's the hold on a Tempest. Tempest going to fall, so one for one exchange. And St. Kipos going to make them pay. Will they even push in the middle lane now? This is horrible for a stay green. Magnus has a spawn key already. Obviously, he doesn't yeah. want to die, but he does have the most important item for the next five to ten minutes. Tempest needs the Astrolabe, the Astrolabe yeah. for his team right now if they want to make the full usage of their lineup. So this is so bad for Stay Green right now. We're not just looking at 4,000 gold and 5,000 experience. We're actually looking at a significant delay in their strongest phase of the game. Yeah. Absolutely, and you can even see the Abyssal Skull, obviously very important, still not finished just yet, although that should be coming up here now uh, for Chessie despite that struggling start. And you can tell a Drunken Master, of course, working on a shrunken head, which could prove to be very, very useful, obviously, in this fight. There was the Abyssal Skull, I think, in fact, maybe just a little bit more for the pattern, but again, should have it by the time another fight picks up here. I'm very curious to see what, uh, what Slither goes for, because again, Staff of the Master, a very powerful pickup on him, but I wonder if that's going to be the go-to choice this game. He's not going to go for it much anytime soon if he continues to use his time to block the engines, for instance, because <laughs> he needs to farm somewhere. Obviously, we just talked about it, Abyssa and Astrolabe are extremely important. So yeah. there will be not too much farming space for him, but right now, for instance, he should be in the mid lane. That's exactly where he's going to head as well. But the thing is, right now, as a fan for, as if you're a fan for a sync, you have to hope that they're not being too confident right now. Yeah. One big team fight with a level two Slither ultimate. I'm not sure if I was talking with you about it yesterday or B, but Slither ulti is actually one of the best team fight ultimates out oh, there. Oh, of course. So yeah. If he gets a really good ultimate out there, and none of his teammates get one shot by a good puppet initiation, and they get actually the initiation in team fight, because so far we've only seen initiations from the Legion side yeah. mostly. Yeah. Magnus got off picked, uh, picked off twice, but in the actual team fights that we saw, it was always the Legion side being able to hit it. Of course, they do have now a portal key on the Magnus as well. She actually just used, but just to get the rune. Okay, so, the point is, there won't be a portal key on the Drunken Master, of course. Yeah. But, with the Drunken Head and the Quicken for Blitz, he might actually be able to initiate very well himself. Yeah. So, that is something to keep in mind as well. Madman farm in the middle lane right here. He's pushed up pretty far, but in the end, it looks like he should be fine. He's going to start falling back. He does have his Energizer. His farm now looking up towards of about 300 gold per minute here. Uh, 4Ks, he playing the Madman. In fact, he just activated his Haste Rune. We'll see if this actually turns into something or not. Invis on a Blitz in the meantime as well uh, on top of that. How about Parasite, by the way? You know, this is an item that's been dropping off lately on Parasites. The Codex. He, he does go the Codex on. I think yep. it might even be level 2 Codex, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that he just purchased. So If you think about it, it's really smart, actually, because they do have the late game now secured already because the Puppet Master is 15. Level 15 already, he's sitting on 450 GPM. Yeah. So looking to the late game, you don't need to buy any supportive items for him just now. He's going to have a shrunk yet anytime <sighs> soon if he chooses to go for it, which is what every Puppet Master pretty Probably. much goes for. Yeah. So with that being said, what do you want right now? Stay green. Once they finally have their items, they will probably group up and try to get towers. You need damage now. You don't need a puzzle box that's going to be effective in about 10 minutes. You need something that adds significant damage to team fight right now, and that's his choice, Codex. So you won't see any Caldra or Hellflower anytime soon. That's it. Yeah. Bottom lane, you can tell they're trying to bait something out big time here. Warbeast is like, I'm farming all line, guys. Uh, come and gank me. Obviously, that's not the case. Drunken Master and Blitz are sitting right behind it, but there's no gank going to be had. Puppet Master is actually doing Ancients in the meantime, yep. <coughs> so he's not even remotely interested in terms of setting up a gank. You talk this about that shrunken head, he's, he's getting there. Again, this is really bad for, for Stay Green. Obviously, it's always bad for the team that is setting up a bait that is not being taken, but specifically for them, they are on a timer right now. They're yeah. not only behind in Golden Speeds, they are on a timer. But going into the late game, sure, you have a Drunk Master and a War Beast, but with the farm that they've received so far and with the overall team setup, you rather want to be on the Legion side when you go into the very late game. Mm -hmm. Both Magmus and Parasite have the possibility and capability to go for um, items like Caldra, like a Hellflower, to support the Puppet Master. And Puppet Master himself is probably able to outcarry Warbeast and Drunk Master. Yeah. With that, what we have right now, with the numbers that we have right now. Yeah. Ooh, that was a, that was a little bit of a face-off right there at the bottom room. The double damage rate actually spawned. They were both teams were kind of curious to go for it, but State Green actually got it in the end. I think actually, yeah, might have playing the Tempest. He actually bottled it up right there. So double damage rune on him, or at least in the bottle. We'll see if he hands that off perhaps to that War Beast or even the Drunken Master here before a fight happens. But bottom lane, yeah, we have a fight that could very likely be taking place. No, not just yet. The Hellhounds actually yep. yeah, kind of doing harassing. a good job at trying to soak up some farm in the enemy jungle with his hounds. Uh, 
Hellborn is looking to maybe set something up here, but they're very unsure themselves. They, they're they waiting for something that can trigger them to go. Maybe it's going to be the Magnus showing in the top lane, but I don't think so, because obviously he has a TP and a bottle. Of yeah. They're great. Yeah, they, they're going to do something here. Stay green is like, we got to make a move. Yep. We got to make a move here in the near future. They have the Ashley, they have those team fight items. They are pulling up a lot of going at the same time. So I'm a little curious about that, but they figure that this is the time. It's very uncertain whether to defend or not. So yeah. finding himself in a very bad spot. If he could get by a slither work, which will most likely not happen, but he needs to keep you out, and that's exactly what he's going to do right now. But they are happy to trade. I mean, the Magnus is most likely going to get the top tower. If not now, then later. Yeah. At worst, it's going to be a deny with the Glyph TP combination. But not even that. He's going to get the tower. He's giving the goal to his team, not last hitting it. So they're trading right now. They can defend the tier 2 tower really easily. The Terran is slightly better for them to defend. They have to say, support has only been in two kills so far. Very silent, but he's doing an amazing <laughs> job. He's constantly blocking the engines. He is placing very good wards overall that are not easily countered. So. From the very beginning, blocking the Tempest camps, doing it on the right side, as we talked about, so Tempest couldn't counter it. Yeah. Up to this point, he's doing an amazing job so far. Yeah. With the protective melody. In mind, exactly. Course, That's what I was going to say. You know, maybe the stats don't speak for him, but as you said, the wards. But also, he's made arguably the biggest play of the game so far. The yep. positioning, the timing. I know it's you're just literally pressing one button, but still, <laughs> he had to. It's a lot of things come to play. All right. So, we do have a Shrunk and a both Drunk Master and Puppet Master purchased okay. at the exact same time. The difference here, of course, is Slither is level 13. And puppet is level yeah. 16. That's huge. Yeah, that Voodoo Puppet level 3, so looking at some good amp damage on that, as well as the life of the puppet, which even means even more damage, of course. Yep. That's uh, that's going to be coming out, so that's big. How about that? A pick up Portal Key actually coming out for his lap right here uh, on the Parasite. I believe he finished with the level 2 Codex, and then he gets the Portal Key. Well, he's going to find a kill here. If he can probably get Blitz, he's going to say, yep, easy kill, and the Portal Key away. <laughs> Right in the face of Drunken Master. He's just oh like, God. whoa, where did uh, where did he go? Oh, he's dead. <laughs> he had so many Wild Hunters earlier, but uh, actually Puppet is now farming the Wild Hunters. We're at the stage in the game where Wild Hunters are still useful, but with that portal key, it's not as necessary anymore. Yeah. The ward side, you can find kills. And I like the combination that he did. With the portal key in mind, he knew, easy kill, I can get out afterwards down the river. Drunk Master will not be able to follow me. Yeah. So well played by him. I have to say, Stay Green looking very lost right now. They are not going for decisive pushes. And obviously, they can't really go for pushes right now because they are significantly behind in their spells and is in their item choices. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure where they go from here. I'm not sure what is their game plan. And they will definitely have a game plan. Maybe it involves Congor, but I'm not sure where they're going to go from here. Yeah. The worst thing that could happen for them, as we now have a full Barry Isle purchased in Slither, but the worst thing that could happen for them is that Slither gets taken out before the Elemental Void. If that happens, the team fight is most likely over. Oh, yeah. No, he needs to get that poison first off, especially. And, yeah, the Elemental Void, we've yet to see a big team fight impact in Elemental Void. There's been a couple solo kills with it, definitely, but no big team impact. <laughs> we, oh. you know, we were talking about it earlier, and all of a sudden, they just open the doors here at the venue, and literally just people start running, and they're yeah, just looking like to get everyone seats. Everyone is running in here <laughs> trying to get the best seats. Oh, Actually, man. I would like to have a camera shot of that. That would be so awesome. <laughs> That'd you be cool. That Eventually, background. you guys will be able to see it, if anything. But uh, yeah, no, they are. They're they're they're, they're coming. They're coming. So that that should also help build the hype here even more in this game. Speaking of that, we definitely have a fight brewing here. At so, the Congor area. Stay Green is really baiting that Congor. There's no direct ward vision here for the Legion side. So they're not sure if Congor is being done. They don't. They also don't have long range spells that they could scout with. Yeah. So I'm not sure if they're actually going to take the bait. Probably not, at least not anytime soon. For now, they're just going to deny the middle tower. That's what's going to happen here. And we'll see from there. Stay Green. As you see, they're coming together as five, then they're splitting in. They're coming together as five, splitting yeah. in. They're not really doing something. I mean, they're forcing a reaction from the lead side, sure, but we now also have a shrug net on the Madman already. Yeah. Yeah, this, uh, again, Sync has definitely been in control, but I will say this much. If there's a team that perseveres, if there's a team that can come from behind and has before, it's Stay Green. Absolutely. They, there's a reason, you know, it, it, this goes, this is the same for all sports, let alone eSports and Han. The best teams, they're, they they get to that point not only because they, they dominate their opponents, but they also win those very tight games on top yep. of that. They win those close games, unlike, you know, maybe some other teams. And they no doubt have history of doing that. So that's where, and I'm not saying Sync is not keeping that in mind because they most certainly are. In fact, it's probably happened them before many times. But that's what I'm saying here and saying, even though the slates look pretty good for Sync, do not count Stay Green out. No, one big team fight, one big right. elemental void, it could be GG for Stay Green. Yep. One big team fight is 
as you said, exactly what could completely shift the game. And I'm not just talking about golden experience, but suddenly SG sitting in the driver's seat again, being able to, with one more set of core items, push down all the towers, something they haven't been able to do so far. Parasite may be looking for something here with a pawn he doesn't find anyone just yet, because SG has very careful positioning. One of the beautiful things about Slither is that you can place the wards everywhere and constantly keep side and block items like the portal key and slow down the enemy slightly. Yeah. So, very, very good tool here, especially when you're behind to constantly scout out the enemy movement or at least be safe in the places where you farm. Yeah. Shrunken heads coming up all over the place, including that uh, that war beast, of course. You know, we've been talking a lot about that in this game, and obviously, as it usually is. I mean, Shrunken Head, arguably, <laughs> like the go to item in just every single game. Uh, in a lot of cases, so there we go. It is going to be finished on Warbeast. But again, it's if you're stay green here, it, you got they're shrunken out of Warbeast now. I mean, are are you looking for any precise item? Do they need to force a team fight here? You feel like, or can they just keep going with this farm game? If I was in stay greens position, I would not go on with the farm game because, it's, for example, Temp is going for shrunken head himself, but there is a parasite with a portal key. It's not like he's going to get two big items anytime yeah. soon that could completely win him, his uh, team the, the game. So I think what items could we possibly look for here? Yeah. Is there axes that are really important? Not really. The Puppet Monster is going to have a, almost, yeah, he's going to have a 10 second and 9 second chunk head in the next two team fights. I don't think that he's going to do much with the, with the Caldera there. Might see a fight here though. It's it is tense. I'm just watching Magmas. He's usually the starter in these situations, of course, channeling up that eruption and going in. They're going to go in with the stock here quickly, and it will be enough to scare off State Green for now. So State Green, obviously, they're not they're not fully committing to Congo. This is more of a we're going to bait you out and find that good situation to jump in ourselves. But it's not going to be enough, at least just yet. And in the end, uh, Sink Esports is going to play passive enough to keep this game uh, continue or to keep this fight from happening for the time being. I will say, I'm, I'm still a little bit surprised. No Souls Bulwark even picked up yet. I know they've prioritized other items, sure, and I'm sure Souls Bulwark will maybe be next in line, but uh, that could prove to be a very big pickup, especially for the Hellborn team, let alone the Legion team as well. So Yeah, it is weird so far as there's a lot of physical damage here on the Hellborn side. Yeah. There's not much physical damage as of now on the Legion side. Papa Master obviously does hit hard already, <laughs> but not that hard. It's mostly his ultimate, right? Yeah, and of course. That and the Whiplash Assassin Shroud. Yeah, 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 of course, there of course. He does, he does hit hard, but it's more physical damage right now. It's, it's so much magic burst here on the Legion side. So yeah. something like a Barrier Idol definitely makes sense here, but they will eventually get a rest fight, I'm sure. Yeah. Here we go. Back in the Conger once again. He's getting close to Half-Life right here. The Legion team, they know. Again, in the vicinity. You see he's going to kind of go in right there with that stock. There is no Bound Eye on the Hellborn team. Magnus is dropping, dropping a little bit to those Slither Wards. Yeah. That is something you need to keep in mind. There is a Rev Ward also on this uphill to the Ancient, so he needs to be very careful about going up there, of course, yep. with that uh, with that stock. I mean, you're in a situation, though, you got to expect that they have Rev Wards and whatnot, so you can't like just act like they can't see you. Luckily, uh, he did yeah. get the bottle from Magnus, so he had the region in there. He's to back to full HP again. But, I mean, the thing for SG is that Warbis can't really solo the, the combo right now. Yeah. It's too... There needs to be more micro here for Minots, to be honest. And he shouldn't send all his elementals in there. He should send them one by one. So Warby's got to up on Conquer again. Conquer doesn't stomp as he does right now. Two stomps, all the elementals are gone. It's a lot of gold for Conquer. That's, uh, you gotta be careful with that with the minions in place. There we go, barrel roll and a slither. No follow up just yet, though. There's a lot of poke coming out here. Those slither wards, though, very powerful tool to have in this situation. Yeah. That's what Amels is showing. I mean, even Puppet Master has taken a couple hits uh, to kill those at this point in the game, so. It, they, they are, again, I, who does this favor, though? I feel like this isn't really giving an advantage to stay green at the same time. So it's almost as if this is just a stalemate here. It's and that's just a favor stalemate. Thing. What I would like to see is that when, as soon as they force them out of Congo, I would like to see Papa Monster heading straight to the bottom lane. We might see initiation, though. Hey, I've, I, <laughs> there's been close initiation attempts for like five or six times now. You just keep feeling like, we're going to go in now. We're going to go in now. Yeah, Congress getting low. I mean, Sync Esports, they're just playing the game now. If we're going to maybe wait till he's very, very low and even go for the ninja here. And that's what will force it. But Stay Green there, not going to give them that opportunity just yet. Continue to play very, very passive. And you just see Madman constantly going back in. He's got his, I'm sure, his finger on that shrunken head ready to go just in case. If that happens, there is a Souls Bulwark purchased by Drunken Master, so. But I would, I would really like to see either the bottom or the mid lane, probably even the mid lane, being pushed in with all five from the Legion side, because they could snag that Conger in no time if there was any mis misjudgment from the Hellbone side. Yeah. They do have enough damage for that. And 
right now they're just sitting there waiting for SG to make a mistake, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Stalking in, just kind of feeling it out. He knows he can be seen with that Rep one right there. The minions doing their best to slowly but surely take down Conker right here. So this has to be one of the most tense situations we've been in all tournament right here. Symbol of Rage just finished by Puppet Master. By oh the way. my god, that could change everything. Yeah. Unless he gets into Ele Elemental Void and just drops. Yeah. If that's the case, of course, that it was better to have a buyback. But if he is able to get to stay away from his teammates and not be in a choke point and just get killed. That might very well, with buybacks here from the Hellbound side, completely decide the fight in yeah. favor of the Legion side. Yeah, and, they, and he's more than likely going to be seen before they actually get in right here with the similar fact, probably showing himself right there. So if you're the Hellbound team, they, they probably they can be with certain that he does not have a buyback now as soon yep. as they see that in his inventory. So you see right here, Mammoth's going to be going. Oh, they're going in. Here we go. Shrugan, that's going to be activated. That tab is all of it not going to be used just yet. Tab's going to But the eruption coming off. No, the one. It's going to be stopped immediately by Parasite. Tackle Swarmies. Protective Melody, full duration for St. Kingsborn. Parasite gets pushed back in though, but Puppet Master is still alive. He has a similar rage still. This is absolute domination and for St. Kingsborn no right there. For his ultimate. He wasn't able to use his ultimate in the team fight because he didn't have mana wow. for it. Wow, no poison burst. That is huge. But now Puppet Master, he has a similar rage. He's going to activate it right here. Will it be enough? No, well, the elemental one goes off. And the elemental four will lock him down for the kill. Batman's going to be fine initially, but now he needs to worry about getting waves. So the buyback on Tevin's right there. Absolutely huge. But Parasite finishing off Drunken. Another buyback coming through from Swinomel right here. And now the Legion team will be forced to fall back. Parasite portal keys away. And that's how it'll end. But yeah, you made a huge point. No poison burst from Slither, but buyback central from even both teams right there. And with Warbeast being dead for the time being, I don't know if they're going to go for Conquer. They probably will try to, but with those four here, if Smackmas is able to reach ASAP and get back to Conquer, they might even be able to intercept that. You see there's in the size of Snoops at the, at the Hellmon side here. They're not quite going for Conquer. Now yeah. going for Conquer with the minions. Again, the minions being destroyed really quickly by Conquer because they're not being spread, but there's Warbeast. Is that enough? This is there big. is only a Rhapsody right now and the Madman in the vicinity. Madman, he's going to try to stalk in here, but there's a ref work down. He can't do it. They're going to get the token. That's going to be a token for his name of Slither. Yeah, Slither gets it right here. There uh, is a token. Now, there was a buyback from Madman, I believe. Yeah, he bought back throughout that fight, yeah. yeah. And there were two buybacks from both Tempest and Slither using one each. But I don't know if that token is actually going to do too much for you. Obviously, it will trigger them to push mid lane now, but they don't have a limited void, so well, that is something they need to keep in mind. That, you know, the biggest thing I'm noticing, the, the golden experience did even increased slightly for Sync yeah. Esports. So you really look at that last fight, and yes, stay green again. As you put it, they got the token of life, sure, but at, well, but at what cost, really? <laughs> in yeah, terms at of what, what, cost? What, they, what they had to do throughout that fight. So Puppet Master, oh, this could be big. The whiplash prop going on right there with the assassin. She had a little bit of damage. Not nearly enough, though. So let's a little tanky. bit himself, though. If Drunk Master's in the vicinity, they could actually bring it down. Drunk Master, however, is at the observatory of his own yeah. side. So not much going to happen here, but they can't play desperate now. Like, Puppet Master may not overplay. If he overplays now without a buyback, they will lose racks oh, yeah. in no time. And there's nothing you can do about that. So definitely something to keep in mind for the Legion side. I'm not sure if they need to be aggressive. I think they can just spread because there's not too much pickup potential. There's only Quicken on the Drunk Master pretty much. Maybe the Warbeast ultimate, but Warbeast yeah. doesn't even have a basher. So I don't think that SG is going to do anything but just group up and go for a tower. So there's definitely more resources on the map that the Legion side could use. Yeah. There you go, cleaning up the middle creep wave right there. It does look like a stay green. They are getting control of that map positioning here in terms of pushing past the river at least. And obviously a lot of that has to do with the token. In fact, speaking of the token of life, really quickly, I want to get your thought on that. They gave it to Slither instead of maybe the War Beast or even the Drunken. You think Slither was the best option? There's one good thing about that. Slither can immediately use his ultimate and after he revives. If he is the main target of Legion, he can still yeah. activate the barrier for his team. So when the cooldowns from the Legion side come off again and they're able to use their second wave of burst, he has a very idle for his team. So it's actually not that bad. Um, I mean, obviously, usually Slither, he is not the highest DPS hero for his team right now. You, you would expect to have more damage come out from Warbeast and Drunk Master if you take the ulti of Slither away. Yeah. Or if you don't use it, that works too. <laughs> but at least he's going to be able to get the ultimate out no matter what. Obviously, we have to keep in mind there were two Shrunk Enhance activated last fight, but there were still three targets around that he could have hit with his ulti as yeah. well. Yeah, so again, yeah, not getting that off, definitely a, a big deal in the last fight as we stressed even earlier. And, you know, it's just, it's just 
Oops, another 101. You need to get that poison burst off because it is a devastating ultimate to deal with. So, yeah, he also goes with Firebrand on top of that. So, of course, that Geometer's Bane uh, could be coming out for him. Puppet Master, his form is, you know, it's still up there, but it's not like it's been raising even more. They they did obviously have that stalemate there yep. going back and forth, so it's understandable. Uh, he, so, he doesn't have the most school now saved up after the Simo, but is trying to farm him now. But a big pick up there. Magnus gets a sheep stick. Yeah. Picked up for his team. That, um, if he's able with the bottom initiation to go on either the Drunken or the Tempest, obviously you don't want to go on the guy the guy with the token. But they have so much burst damage, they could, with the Puppet ulti, take down either of those two heroes. Yeah. And you would probably go for the Tempest if you have the chance to get him. And since he doesn't have a portal key, he's not going to be able to stay too far back either if he wants to use a very good elemental void. So yeah. that's definitely a good target to go for. I feel, however, that. Okay, now they got a lot of experience back, so they're sitting still at a 17,000 experience lead. That's a ton of <laughs> levels and stats that go in favor of the Legion side. Yeah. I mean, you just look at the top four experience leads in the game, they're all on the Legion side. So that, that alone really tells you the story, uh, if anything. But again, Stay Grid, they're playing the aggressors right here. They have the token alive, so they're in the front lines with it. So he's playing like a boss here, yep, not too concerned. He does have no buyback. He bought an Abyssal Skull himself, and he's very oh, yeah. aggressive. This is going to be a tower kill. I mean, you can tell Sinky Esports are delayed as much as possible, but there's no way they're going to be jumping in right there unless they really felt comfortable for a jump chance. But defend the base is the name of the game here. I don't think State Green is going to go full force by any means. No, what I want to see right now coming out of Sync to close out this game pretty much is have a ward around the bottom T2. Like, in front on the bottom T2. Scout out the Tempest. Go with the Magnus out the instant hags PK on the Tempest. Parasite has a portal key as well. He is allowed to use his burst on the Tempest because Tempest can buy back. The Legion side won't care. There is no tower around yeah. that he could TP to. Yeah. So get down the Tempest immediately. And after that, they have so much DPS with that symbol that Drunk Master is not going to be able to lock down the Puppet Master enough for him to stay alive the entirety of the fight and yeah. deal constant damage. So that is basically the plan for Sync Esports. I hope that supports on the ball because Sync, the SG, will obviously go for that tower next. It's the only outer tower still alive. Yeah. 40 minutes here in a game number one. Again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Haunt Tour World Finals here for season number two. We have Stay Green versus Sync Esports, a semi-final matchup. Lose, you've, you're you not finished technically. You'll play in a third place match, and there is a prize pool difference between third and fourth. But when you move on to the grand finals, where there's, of course, the majority of the prize pool, and that prestige of claiming the champion here of Haunt Tour Season 2 of the World Finals. And so. you have a chance to get the Doombringer, man. That's that trophy is well, I'm sick. sure we'll see that later on today. And yeah, holy crap, man. And I know we posted pictures of that and whatnot, but you guys, <laughs> it's an amazing, amazing prop there that we got. It. It's practically a real sword, too, in the end. Uh, good old, good old life-size Doombringer. Uh, anyways, uh, do not uh, not Token, but uh, Shrunken Head just finished on, on Tempest. But again, you were making up the point. It's like, th that's good. I mean, it's still almost necessary, you could argue, but Parasite doesn't really care. He has a portal key. He jumps in. He ulties anyways, and he stops the Tempest. I mean, ultimate. the thing is, um, as a Magmus, I mentioned before, you can just ulti PK Hex instantly, right? You can shift Q those commands. There is no reaction time. No human reaction time can yeah. possibly pop a Shrunken Head before that. Um, the thing is, however, if he's scared of getting a Slither Ward on top of his head when he's turning the ultimate, he can also just just peek in and hacks instantly with the stun. And yeah. that channel the ultimate outside the fight. Come back in. We might see a fight here, though. Yeah, we will, man. man. He finds four of them. He's going to run right in. There's a Shrunken Head. He's going to jump on a Drunken Master. The team's point not the fastest right now, but he's doing a good amount of damage. Activates that Berserk of his. He's being chased back. The Legion team not ready to fight. They're popping Shrunken Heads very defensively right here. Man, is going to get picked off. He does not have a buyback. What was that from Sink? That was miscommunication big time. They were not ready. I think it was more so that he didn't know that there were so many years in his own jungle. He stalked in there, yeah. he was checking for something, and he was like, uh-oh, yeah. that's a lot of SG heroes right on my head. So he pops the shrunk and runs around a little bit, then he thinks, okay, the best I can make out of this situation is hit on the drug Master. Drug Master get away from me, he just pushes him away, and then everyone is on the retreat and he just dies. Well, your puppet used his shrunk in. Uh, Mammon obviously did. They were very, very defensive right there. So yeah, Puppet, that was down. There was no way they were going to fight right there. So that ended up being that free tower kill Token in favor of State Green. Token is down now. They will not be able to push the base. Um, if they find a pickup on a target that does not have a buyback, that is intel they don't have, though. That is something we have as casters, but they don't. So they could think, OK, we're going to watch the Puppet inventory. As soon as we see that he buys the next big item, we have to assume that he doesn't have a buyback. We need to go with him with all five and the Slither Wards constantly scouting out, kill him, 
then go for a base push. I don't think they can straight up push the base yeah. without a token. Uh, the thing, of course, they can wait for Conger again. Yeah. Now, speaking of that next item for Puppet Master, I mean, uh, there was actually a game that uh, that I was looking into earlier. I think it was Cats versus MRR, that epic, like, 75-minute game that they played that Cats ended up winning. Uh, FF for Cats was playing the Puppet Master. His build, he ended up going a Behemoth's Heart to follow up. Instead, you know, I was saying, what about something like a Wing Bow for that evasion aspect, you know, even the 100 increased range. Sure, the agility may not synergize the best with the Puppet Master, but good for that. But the Behemoth's Heart also good in case you get caught in that Tempest Ultimate. It takes you up even more. It, or would you even like to see a different round altogether. I think the Behemoth Heart, the problem with that here is if he gets caught in the Tempest Ultimate in an Elemental, in elemental Void, as I now <laughs> learn or like to say, if he gets caught in that, the problem is that if the enemy team, if FG, actually is able to bring his, team, his teammates down, then yeah. it's going to be a puppet that surely has full HP, but he's going to be alone. So yeah. there's a point in the game where you get too tanky that you survive your, all your teammates, and then you stand alone there against so many disables, your BKB, your shrunken is most likely already over. So that is a situation you don't want to be in. What you want to be in is you have enough HP to survive an elemental void, yeah. pop your symbol of rage afterwards, and have so much damage that you can, if you are the ones initiating, and hopefully not with a madman, because that is not really initiation, if you are the ones initiating, you want to use your ulti and one-shot a target. So something like a Savage Maze would be really good. Why Genjuro could also work okay. is because he has to reposition himself several times in a team fight. Genjuro is a really good item for that. Obviously, he's not going to go for a portal key. But <laughs> Genjuro allows him to constantly dodge the Tempest. Drunken Master has the only ability to go through his shrunken head. We're not talking about Elemental Void now. So he could push him towards the Tempest. And if he wants to avoid that, with the Genjuro, he has so much movement speed. And he has the ability to use it twice in a team fight. Yeah. That could definitely be a good item here. Generally, I would rather like to see something like a Savage Maze before Genjuro. I think here both works. Yeah. Well, well, well. Stay green. I mean, they are just, they're in that mindset. I mean, this is, they do this a lot. They're just, they're just sticking together as a team. The, the, the SG train, as it's called. But here we go. The push, the initiation. This is going to be happening here shortly. Who are they going to go for? They want to put Rhapsody, actually. Rhapsody is going to be found in the jungle. But a Magnus counter start coming out of the sheep. they got a Dragon Master. The first are coming out from Magnus. But the Elemental Void going to be stopped. Puppet Master going to be fun. Everything's going off. The eruption. Will they drop Dragon? Yes, they will. But Puppet Master gets bursted down. He will buy back, though. He's going to be coming back in the midst of the fight. Drunken Master is still up. I thought he was dead. He is still up. Madman's going to fall right there. Magnus, the sole survivor all of a sudden. And Stay Green is going to dominate the fight when it's all said and done. Yeah, and Puppet Master was forced to use a buyback as well. And it's not even using... Like, he didn't have the damage in this fight to actually do much. He was able to get full HP with the Symbol of Rage. But what happened, he was pretty much alone there with just Magnus. Rhapsody got picked up right away. I don't know how SG has so much map control in terms of wards, and there's so little wards here from, from the from the Legion side. That is the second time that SG is complete able to completely outmaneuver Sing by going through the jungle. First time Madman was caught out, second time they move through the jungle, get into the mid lane, mid lane, and Rhapsody has the same moment as Madman. Oh shit, that's a lot of heroes on me. <laughs> what did I say earlier, man? If there's a team that's perseveres, if there's a team that will come back, if there's a team that will capitalize on your mistakes, yep. it is absolutely stay green, especially at the Haunt Tour World Finals. They are here to win it all, and anything less would be an absolute disappointment. And they, you know, the, the golden experience are still very slightly indifferent here at this point, even slightly for stay green, not sure, but you could say it's, it's a huge lead for stay green all of a sudden. I mean, the momentum, if anything, it's just yep. absolutely huge in their favor at this point. So from 17,000 experience lead in favor of Sing, we went down to 2,000 only. That's nothing. At this stage of the game, it doesn't matter. I have to say, now that SG is pushing the base, this is the best moment possible for Sing to have a good team fight. There is no better moment, but SG is smart. They will fall back for now. They have a lot of time on their token. They're going to farm up, maybe finish one last set of core items, and yeah. then they will go for the base. If Sing does a terrible mistake, which actually Warby's might be doing. This is going to be close. Will it be enough for the kill? He's attacking his own puppet because of the puppet shell. Always loves seeing that combo. He's basically killing himself as a result of that. That's just what Puppet Master does. So yeah, big fight under Jesse. He just bought a level 2 shield breaker. So he does not have a buyback, actually. No buyback, so this is even minute. more reason to try to make a push right here, but I, I don't know if they're really going to be able to. It's going to be so important for Puppet to have both a buyback and a Savage Mace. Yeah. If they fight at the base, Genjuro is not as important anymore because it's not open terrain where they're fighting, where he has to reposition himself. A base is a very straightforward fight. 
There's still no portal key on the Tempest. I don't think he's going to go for one. I think he's going to go for a refreshing ornament next. So he really needs a Savage Mace and a buyback. He is tanky enough that he will survive one Elemental Void. Yeah. He's going to be able to reach out with the Symbol of Rage again. Then he's going to die. He needs to be able to buy back then and finish out the fight. It's going to be so important. I haven't even seen who did Magnus use the Hex on. It was uh, the Drunken Master? It was Drunken Master in the midst of that fight, yeah. Because I don't know how they can possibly think that they kill the Drunken Master before Tempest just slowly walks in and uses his Elemental Void. I know, by that, his Tempest play, it's one of those situations, although he doesn't have a portal key, it feels like he always has a portal key. <laughs> He's just so good at yeah, positioning yeah, himself absolutely. and knowing you know, when and where to go. It was by, both yeah. his play, but also SG yeah. as a whole, as they maneuvered here through this. You even see Sync support actually plays the ward at this very position where SG came from. And SG is not going to do the same twice. They're going to come from a different angle next time. So, yeah. yeah, a little bit of more experience here for the SG side, definitely. So. What Sync has to do right now, if they're not getting another pickoff with the Puppet, his ultimate is just about 15 seconds off cooldown. Um, they don't get another pickoff. They need to be ready for that base fight. They may not get picked off themselves. If any one of them without a buyback gets picked off, the game is over. How about a couple of the huge uh, pickups here? And we talked about the Brutalizer on Worms without a Shield Breaker. Brutalizer also on Drunken Master, so they just even have extra lockdown now. And then there's a Null Fire Blade actually on Slither. Very good against a hero like Puppet Master, for example. You know, just great for that purge effect in general, as always. So, huge item pickups across the board in favor of State Green. And here we go into the base. Are we going to see a defense here? Magnus, I'm waiting, man. I'm waiting for that. Okay, he's just going to stun in. He's no eruption just yet. Maybe try to beat out some shrunken heads, but Stagger is not falling for it. They're not going to use anything. A vulnerability will be used as a codex. Drunk is actually dropping really low right there. Yeah, they just want to get him low. They don't want to kill him just yet because the revive time of the Drunk Master actually plays a role in a team fight with yeah. the token. So there's something to keep in mind. He's going to be able to region up pretty quickly, though. Then they will go for the rags. Continuing to push in. Not, uh, okay, this is that big fallback, the, the classic. We're going to act like we're going away, but not really. But this ward is side placed by support, as you mentioned earlier. It is actually Actually helpful, five. actually helpful here. <laughs> so, yeah, good to see him. They run right into it. So, I'm sure Stay Green Evil will pick up on this. They're like, maybe why aren't they going out? Puppet Master is actually extending a little bit right here. But uh, not going to get caught. He does have 3,800 gold, so he has the second and final Storm buyback. Spirit, actually, on Tempest. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a that is a very different item, and yeah, that will play a big role. For instance, on a target that has been hacked or has the puppet ulti on him, obviously the puppet ulti will stay, but it can significantly delay this one-shot burst that puppet wants to go through with yeah. when he uses his ultimate on someone. So knowing uh, knowing Swinomelons, this is probably a, a strat pause here. <laughs> <laughs> going in, uh, apparently yeah, there could a, be, and like bug, you can't fault him for it. As I said, he's using every single advantage he can yeah. get because he's the a very determined player when it comes to to playing in tournaments. And yeah, I mean, it's one way to win, of course. And this is the push. If they lose this push, there's so much momentum going in favor of Sync. Suddenly, if Sync doesn't have to use too many buybacks on their side, if they get a significant and good win in this team fight. They will have one more set of core items. And then you look at Puppet again, and then you're like, ah, Puppet is back on the game. He is here to dominate that team fight. And yes, he doesn't sir. need buybacks anymore because he's going to one-shot basically everyone on the Hellbone yeah. side. Are we ready? We're ready. Is uh, Sinky Esports ready is the question. Holy crap, man. I mean, again, we knew today was going to be epic. We're just getting started here with game yeah, one. Just game but one. It, is, <laughs> it is already so epic. And again, we're... We're just getting started. It's no doubt going to be a hell of a day today. I'm really excited. So at least Milkfat was wrong. You said 15 minutes. Yeah. Stumps. Either way, third I'm game is going to be wrong. epic. <laughs> and now we have the first egg game already being wrong. really epic. I'm already losing my voice, man, but do my best and not, not go all the way out at least. All right, though. We got uh, we got State Green pushing in right here. Madman going to be out uh, there. There's a stun once again from Magnus, but again, not the biggest follow-up. Untouchable is going to be accurate from Drunken. No glyph. Can they give this up? There's no glyph. Okay, they're not going to fall back there. No, they are perfectly yeah. fine. They're going to wait for the next Drunk Master ultimate. It's only 15 seconds. That's the next tweet wave. Not even this one. They can they can even go with this stun if they want to. Well, Drunk Master ultimate, he has the token. He's going to hit down the racks. And there's almost nothing they can do about this if they don't go around. They need to go from behind. to circumvent the lines here and go on SG from behind. But they just let the racks fall. Here we go. Is this going to be it? Magma stuns in. They want to delay this. Drunken Master just doesn't give two shits. Untouchable still up. He is going to fall back, though. Yeah, Kyle's saying fall back, fall back. He's man. perfectly fine with that. 
Wow. Like the Rex, every time the Rex takes more damage. They could do even do the same for the range Rex if they wanted to. They yep. could take both Rex down in this fashion. Drunk Master is going to be almost full HP again by the time he's hitting that Rex. Gonna wait for his ultimate again, only five seconds. Yeah, you know, the greatest thing about that ultimate, yes, it basically becomes a null stone for the duration, but it also decreases the damage you take by 40%. Yep. I mean, that's absurd. That really is a 40% damage reduction over the, what is it, six, ten seconds. What the? I didn't even realize this ability was that powerful, and it's only on a 30 second cooldown. Welcome to Heroes of New York. Wow, Drunken Master. Oh, he apparently no. Uh, but yeah, no, Drunken Master at the front lines. He's got about a minute left for that token alive, so this is going to be one more grief wave here. In terms of them feeling good. Oh, they're going to jump right here. Puppet Master gets caught. Puppet Master dropping. He is going to fall back. This comes in with a counter rush. Puppet Master, he has to buy back. It's the, fifth, the second and final buyback. Parasite comes in. The Tempest Ultimate is going to be stopped on Parasite Falls. Puppet Master, where is he? He is here finally. They have low on Slither right there. But no, that's actually an illusion, so never mind. Puppet Master in trouble. He's going to be dope. Stay green, going full force. They want to end the game here now. But are they overextending right here? Storm Spirit goes out. Tempest dropping. Tempest will fall. And Stay Green now has to fall back all together. Blitz Mega. Caught out at least. Madman is chasing. Will he get the kill? Magma stuns in. The sheep stick on his slither. Can they lock him down enough? Whiplash Brock's coming out. Slither gonna hold his ground. Puppets hold in place. The protective melody coming up with the Legion team. Out. Down goes Rhapsody. Slither still alive. No, he will fall. But now Puppet Master in an awkward spot. Drunken Master jumps in. Do they have enough damage up? No, they want to run actually. Drunken Master goes down. He had the token though. Warby's is standing his ground. Magnus oh goes God. down. The DPS is way too much to handle. The physical presence. If they kill Puppet Master, this is probably the game right here. Puppet Master doesn't stand a chance. Though a similar range. No, it's not enough. Down goes Puppet. Hat trick for Jesse. That could very possibly be game number one. That should be game number one. There is nothing Legion Kansai can do. Puppet is out of buyback. So is Magnus. And the others are not going to be enough to bring those two down here. Amazing play from not only SG, but specifically those two to stand their ground. They knew what they were doing when they stayed in the vicinity. There was so much time being used on Kyle to kill the Slither here by Puppet and Magnus. And they were able to get the supporting cast of those two, then completely obliterated the Magnus in like two seconds or something before he was able to get out another spell. And then they could work on the Puppet Master. And again, if Puppet Master is alone, he can't do much. Yeah. Here we go. They're just going to finish out. He pops his shark in hand. They're just going for Mega Creeps. They're saying if you're not going to concede, we're just going to finish the game the old fashioned way. Yep. Mega Creeps has spawned. This is it. Stay Green's going to take game number one here in the grand, or the <laughs> semifinals, excuse me. I mean, they're only 10,000 gold ahead, but with <laughs> Mega Creeps, it's so important. GG, well played. G -G. Stay Green, as you can see, they are pumped. They know there's still a series left, but. You talk about the way they won there, especially with uh, taking game number one. I mean, again, I, <laughs> it was setting up, wasn't it? You know, I even brought it up. Again, Stay Green, th what the team, if any, they will come back. They will make you pay. They did it. They made them pay. Sink it's always loses. the same, man. Like, they were behind in the mid game with a mid game focused lineup. We saw that they had a good chance in the late game, but it was more due to their positioning than their actual spells. Yeah. Their positioning was so much better than Sing's. So much better. Yeah. Sing, Puppet Master getting caught out in front of his base yeah. when they weren't even able to touch SG while they were hitting the racks, like in the base, and then he's leaving the base and yeah. just dying. And then Magnus even going in. It would be one thing to say, okay, you died, you're just going to buy back, we're going to try again. But yeah. everyone suddenly committed because Puppet Master was dying. And then Puppet Master to buy back and walk in there. Crazy game. <sighs> what was that, about a 55 minute game right there? Stay Green does take game number one over Exton. Or <laughs> wow, over Sync Esports, formerly Exton Alley Esports even. But now Sync Esports. And, and I'll say this much too, as far as, as far as that game is concerned, because. Sync Esports, again, because of the lead that they have, because they ended up falling apart, Stay Green ended up coming back and eventually winning it. Sync Esports, they got to be demoralized, man. And